chose to be with us tonight. Thrilled that you were, that you have gathered around the uh, the internet tonight to uh, hear what the Lord has to say. We've got Brother James Wilkins to my right, Brother John Melson to my left. Amen. And we're excited about everything the Lord's going to say tonight through His Word. Amen. We encourage you once again to get a a uh, good King James Bible, word for word translation. Follow along, take notes, and judge us by everything we say based upon the Word of God tonight. Amen. Uh, we're going to be dealing uh, with uh, instruction in righteousness, righteousness tonight again, and uh, we're believing we're going to bring forth some things that will be very beneficial and uh, to us each and every one. Amen. Before we even do any of that, we want to go before the Lord in prayer tonight, as we always do. Amen. We're praying for the uh, the youth camp out in Palestine, Texas. It's going on, and we just pray the Lord to have His way there in that group, and to, to bless the ministers and all the families and all the people that's represented and gathered there for safe travels, and then also for the word of God to go forth uh, in a great and mighty way. Amen. So we're just uh, we're praying for that event. And uh, we just want to pray for all the churches across the country tonight. If you're, uh, whether you gathered in this room or whether you gathered uh, by the internet, Facebook tonight, if you have a need tonight, we can't receive your uh, request, but we're just going to believe with you on behalf of whatever uh, it might be tonight. Amen. So if you would, once again, uh, let me encourage you just to join together with us. And let's pray together tonight. Amen. Father, we come before you tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and we just uh, call upon the name of, that's above every name tonight. Thank Glory you, to Lord God Jesus. and the Lamb of God tonight, Lord. We give you praise and glory and honor tonight, Lord. We give you all Thank the glory. You, Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this great salvation that we have tonight, Lord. We thank you for the blood of the Lamb. We thank you for Jesus tonight. We thank you for Calvary's cross tonight, the great provision, all the benefits. We thank you for the relationship that we have tonight through the blood of Jesus, the great cleansing work that took place at Calvary. We thank you for the righteousness of God tonight that comes by the way of faith in the cross tonight. We give you praise for all of these things and so, so very much for we thank you for the eternal home and destiny lord that you charted for us tonight lord as we remain and abide in this great faith lord and we pray for the people tonight lord you saw their their hands lifted you know their hearts need their cry tonight lord their petition and their prayer we're praying god for the move on behalf of every single need lord let there be healing in that sick body tonight lord let there be lord a healing a uh, miracle oh, take place yeah. right now yes. where they sit, Lord, from the top of the head yes. all the way down to the very Amen. sole of their feet tonight, yes. Lord. Let there be a complete healing yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Let there be provision, Father, Lord, tonight Jesus. where there is lack, Lord, tonight. Yes. Help us all, Lord, to uh, to flourish and grow in this great Thank gospel, you, Lord, Lord, and prosper Lord. in this gospel, Lord. We know it's your will that we prospers our yes. soul prospers tonight lord and we're believing for growth spiritual growth yes. tonight lord by your grace and as our knowledge increases and yeah. in, in what jesus accomplished for us at calvary the many benefits lord and, and just the wonderful life lord that you've given us as we walk holding those nail scarred hands tonight clinging to the cross and and uh, just march it on with Jesus. Glory to God. All Hallelujah. the way to the end tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, we just thank you, Lord, for the ministries across the country that you raised up that are still determined to preach nothing but Jesus yes. Christ and Him crucified, thank you, Lord. Jesus. We thank you for each and every one. You, tonight, we pray, God, that you bless those ministers and ministries tonight in a great way. Draw people to that uh, church house, Lord, yes. wherever they might gather yes. faith to Lord God. Draw people into Lord. that assembly, Lord, that they might grow and flourish yes. and be blessed, Hallelujah. Lord God, by the, the, the only gospel and the message yes. of the cross, Lord. And Lord pray, God, God, that you bless that minister tonight, Lord, that you strengthen him for the days ahead, yes. Lord. And, Lord. And Lord, just uh, surround him with your goodness and your yes. grace and your mercy, Hallelujah. Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for each and every one tonight that's in this good fight. Glory to the Lamb of God. We thank you for uh, each and every one, Lord, no matter where they are tonight, wherever you strategically have positioned them, Lord, to preach this glorious gospel. We give you praise. 
on their behalf tonight, Lord. We're still glorying in this great gospel, still glorying in the cross tonight. Oh, Lord, in here, on the home front, we surely need your help. We desire, Lord, that you would help us tonight. Lord, that we would go forth with your word with clarity and understanding. Lord God, would help us to do no damage, Lord, but help us to uh, uh, to, to present it, Lord, in a way that would be pleasing you. And, uh, Lord, with clarity and understanding, Lord, anoint the people's ears that they might receive uh, what you're saying through your word tonight. May the Holy Spirit just uh, uh, have his way in the hearts and lives of everyone tonight that's us as well knowing our lips to speak lord as the truth goes forward touch the brethren tonight lord god and we just want to thank you once again uh, lord for this opportunity to share your word to present the gospel lord god to present this uh, uh, walk of righteousness tonight, Lord, and present this instruction in righteousness, Lord, and, and uh, how you would uh, desire the, the church to uh, function and behave in this final hour of the church age, Lord, and we just want to give you praise for it all, Lord. Once again, it is indeed a humbling thing. Uh, but it is an honor and a privilege tonight. We thank you, Lord, for including us, thank you, Lord calling Jesus. us Hallelujah. and including us, Lord, in, in the great uh, plan that you have uh, in this final hour of the church age. Lord. We just believe it for souls. We believe in you tonight, Lord, for uh, spiritual growth. We believe in you for growth in marriage with the Lord as people uh, coming to the assembly here and also join us by live streaming as well as we go out literally around the world tonight to as many as would be drawn uh, to this outlet to drink of the water of life freely, Lord. And once again, we love you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We ask it all in Jesus' lovely name, giving you all the praise and all the glory. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Lift your hands. Give him praise tonight. In the house of God, once again, he's worthy of all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to begin, uh, pick back up where we was uh, a couple weeks ago. Amen. We missed doing the broadcast last Wednesday night, but we're back on track tonight. And... Uh, we're just going to pick back up in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and in verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and in verse 12. Amen. Amen. We're uh, looking at dealing with some very interesting things tonight. Amen. And uh, these are some things that I've been guilty of just skimming over in the past, maybe yeah. touching on it here and there every once in a while. Tonight we're going to. Uh, try to look at it in, in with some depth and some understanding, amen. And once again, as I always try to explain, you know, even among the three of us, we're not going to be able to deal with every sp uh, specific uh, thing that's presented here. We're going to try to deal with what the Lord has laid on, on our heart tonight, hitting the, the mountain peaks of uh, uh, this particular passage of Scripture. Amen. So if uh, we, we may leave some, leave some things there that you could uh, dig up yourself. So we're thankful for that. Amen. Amen. But uh, I'm going to read uh, maybe three or four verses, and then we're going to come back to the top and begin to dissect these verses of Scripture. Amen. Amen. And it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, And uh, for we dare not make, of our, make ourselves of the number... <clears throat> or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. But they measure themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. That's strong. Man, are not That's wise. Yes. But to verse 13, but we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us a measure to reach even unto you. Amen. So this measure that Paul is speaking about includes uh, reaching even unto the church in Corinth. Amen. That's what he's speaking about there. I'll try to bring some clarity to this in just a moment. Verse 14, for we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure as though we reach not unto you for we 
are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors. But having hope, when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he, verse 17, but he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. I don't know. I don't know. For, for not he who commends himself is approved, Here we go. but whom the Lord commendeth. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. the Lord. Amen. Now let's define a few things tonight. Amen. Yes. Amen. If we go back to verse 12. Amen. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of abbreviate a few of the uh, uh, things. To, uh, abbreviate a few of the definitions tonight. So jot these things down. Now, I want to encourage you again to search these things out for yourself, amen. But the number, it says, make, we, for we dare not make ourselves of the number. The, the number that Paul is identifying there with are the false apostles that he has been dealing with, uh, not only in this letter that he wrote to uh, uh, Corinth, but he's always dealing with false brethren, false preachers, false teachers, false apostles. Here in, in, in 2 Corinthians, he's dealing with false apostles. These that have presented themselves as being apostles, but they're not. They're false apostles. Now, let's just stick with this verse for just a moment because I think understanding this verse in clarity helps us to understand the rest of what we have already read. Amen. Amen. So the, that number that Paul is speaking about here, we, we, we don't we don't partner with these. We don't we dare not make ourselves of that number. Amen. Amen. Of these false apostles. Amen. 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 And, and I know that in the note here, it's interesting. We use this phrase all the time. The dividing line uh, of the church is the, the, the gospel of the cross, Amen. the message of the cross. So here right. we have false apostles who are coming preaching another gospel. Paul is bringing attention and bringing an awareness to that. Amen. The people need to know that these are outside of uh, the, the parameters of the true gospel. They present themselves as apostles, but they're That's not. Right. Amen. They are false apostles. The irony of this thing is that these false apostles are actually saying that Paul is a false apostle, right. an apostle right. who's operating by the flesh. Yeah, so right. that is the irony of the thing. Now, yeah. Paul is, is, is presenting himself, amen, to the church in Corinth that he is the apostle that has been uh, sent by the Lord to that body, amen. So he said that, as we continue, or compare. Uh, that word compare there actually means something different other than what we normally think of when we say compare. The, that word compare there means to join together. That's right. Amen. So we dare not make ourselves of the number of these false apostles or join ourselves together with them. We don't join together ourselves with these, these some, he calls them some, he calls them the number, the word some and the word number there it is identifying with this same group of uh, false apostles or this group of people. It seems to be more than one. It is, it is plural. It seems like at times. Amen. And it says compare ourselves with some. I think the word some would certainly mean more than one. Oh, right? yeah. Number yeah. would mean more than one. Right. So Paul is right. dealing with more than just one individual. Right. Yeah. They normally come in a flock. They you know, they, they normally come in droves, false prophets, false, false apostles, and they did in that day, and they and they, they do today. They, they they all roosting on the same oh, right wing. You know, that, that's right. 
they, they, they join together. They get along, you yeah, see. Yeah. And uh, they normally come in droves, amen. Yes, and it says, or join together ourselves with some who commend themselves. Now, the word commend there means that they have uh, been self-appointed. They have not been God-appointed to their apostleship. It means that they have commended themselves. They have appointed themselves to this position. They refer to themselves apostles, but Paul says they're false apostles. Amen. Okay? So are you seeing this picture? Yes. I hope. Amen. And it says, who commend themselves, but they measure themselves by themselves. There we go. They measure themselves by themselves right. and compare themselves among themselves. And look what he says are not wise. Now let me try to bring a little clarity to the what he's saying after that because that's a mouthful. It says, but they measuring themselves by themselves. In other words, this, this group of false apostles, they're working together to promote one another. Amen. Amen. They measure themselves by themselves, comparing themselves among themselves, but they are not wise. Amen. These are self-righteous. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. Now let me let me go over to my notes. It's going to help me keep keep me on track tonight. Amen. Uh, and I've already said some who commend themselves. To commend means to uh, means approval. And, and here it refers to those who have approved uh, themselves or self appointed themselves to positions in the church. The Lord didn't command or appoint these, but it was all carried out by religious politics. Right. Right. Amen. And, and, and now understand what Paul is saying here. They measure themselves by themselves. No doubt that there were letters of recommendation or commendation right. that were being sent by others into the church, mainly here in Corinth, but no doubt that it was taking place throughout uh, the, 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 the churches that Paul had planted. But more than likely, it doesn't say that, but more than likely these letters were coming out of Jerusalem and they were recommending these particular apostles to the church in Corinth. And by that letter coming from Jerusalem or whoever had penned or written that letter, uh, even if it was a specific individual, it would have been someone who was well known right. and carried some weight and some uh, uh, maybe some uh, you know uh, authority in the in the realm of Christianity in that day. So the people in Corinth, because of that recommendation from these others, they just bought off on these apostles, false apostles, right. because of the acquaintances because of the people that were, were recommending them, uh, the, the people in the church at Corinth were just, they had just forgotten about the apostle Paul. Now they're embracing uh, these false apostles. So that's what Paul is dealing with. Even though you've gotten a letter from others that may have come from Jerusalem, amen, it, that doesn't carry any weight, amen. They, they're not God called. Remember, uh, we dealt with it, uh, when was it, Sunday morning, I think it was, you know, he said there's those in Jerusalem or elsewhere that seem to present themselves as somewhat but they add nothing to me. Right. And if Paul would say, well, they add nothing to me, they'll certainly add nothing to the church. That's They're right. there to disrupt Amen. and disturb right. and to deceive and, and cause damage and, uh, to the body of Christ. Amen. So I'm hoping we have a clear picture Amen. on that. But what I want to say uh, here is that, you know, after the death of Paul the apostle, uh, and after the, in, in those apostles of his day, we see where this type of thing took over the church, amen, where uh, there was this religious uh, hierarchy, uh, politics within the, the body, amen, and then the offspring of all of that was the Catholic church, you see. Oh, yeah. And so we, we see after this, uh, after the apostleship and uh, that, was removed, amen, then the, the, the church began to tr attempt to try to establish a, a human uh, leadership 
all of the people apart from the leading of the Holy Spirit and apart from the Word of God Amen. and apart from the will of God, actually even uh, hiding or actually even uh, steering the people away from the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And then so then the church moved into the dark ages, so to speak. So we see that uh, coming to pass in the Catholic Church, which came into existence and began, and it became entirely man directed with its leaders who were man appointed. Man Amen. Appointed. Uh, such crept into what is now also known as denominations. We see the same thing, same thing happening in the denominations where its leaders. Uh, and, and pastors are all voted on. All voted. Amen. Are they are they assigned out of headquarters right. wherever that might be for the for the Church of God? I believe it's Cleveland Assemblies of God. Uh, it's in Springfield, Missouri, but wherever their headquarters are, that you know those places normally pull the strings. You know they normally send down orders. You know and, and and that sort of thing. So they the direct the path of the church instead of the church being led by the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. instead of the church being directed by the Word of God. Amen. So we see all of that. So, ladies and gentlemen. This, understanding this, we will understand a little bit more about why the Apostle Paul said in Acts chapter 20, I think it was, he said, after my departing, there will be grievous wolves that will come in and just devour right. uh, the, 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 the body. Right. And then there will be those that will come up, come up even among ourselves. Right. Amen. And, and try and making followers after themselves, you see. So he, 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 in a prophetic way, he, he saw what was going to happen, amen, to the church after his departing. So in his lifetime, he did everything within his ability to establish yes. the church, Hallelujah. To, to cause it to become God rooted is. and yes. grounded on Thank the message of the cross Thank and you, to Hallelujah. be spirit led and not man led. Amen. amen. I know, yes, I understand. God incorporates men into his strategy of things. He works through apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. I understand that. Yes. But but the 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 God main God. thrust is that we hear from God. Amen. What is God saying? The, the the apostle, prophet, pastor, and teacher, whatever he says is to line up with what the Holy Spirit is saying through the Word of God. Amen. And right. it's Amen. not to be a part of that, apart from that. It's not, the, the gospel is not man exalting the cross or the message, the gospel is Christ exalting, amen. So here we have these false apostles who were exalting each other right. to, to the people, amen, endorsing one another, commending one another, recommending one right. another, amen. Paul would say, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ. My apostleship is not predicated oh, upon uh, Jerusalem or anyone out of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wasn't the what I come preaching to you wasn't given to me by oh, man. It was given to me by it. Jesus Christ, and 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 all of that should hold true within the realm yes, of Christianity and in, in, in the the sphere. Of, of things in the modern day church. Everything should be according to thus saith the Lord thy God. We don't, you know, we're not eliminating people by saying that, but what we are saying is that we will judge you people, whoever you are, whatever title, whatever office that you claim, even if you, others claim you, even if you're humble enough to deny yourself being an apostle, but let's just say others claim that you are. We're still going to judge you what comes from your lips based upon the word of God. And if what you say, even though you carry the title of apostle, does not line up with the word of God, amen, and, and, and through the lenses of the cross, we're going to turn away from what you're saying and adhere to what the word of God is amen. saying. In every case, doesn't matter. In every case. Bible says don't don't allow no man to deceive you, no amen. Man. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. So so back to uh, my reading here just a little bit, amen. And he amen. said, uh, 
so we see this happening in denominations and, and even uh, and even non-denominational churches you see it where men has tried to establish a hierarchy or a level of um, of superior, superiority within that realm of existence, amen. I, I don't hold true to any of that, amen. I, I don't recognize any of that. And people will come along and say, well, you're denying accountability. No, I, I'm, I, I'm placing more accountability uh, upon myself by denying accountability to men because there's no greater accountability to than to Jesus Christ. Come on, then, come on. If I, if I was find myself accountable to a, uh, a presbyter or a state supervisor come or on. something amen. of that nature, amen, I've actually uh, decreased my accountability because I'm, I'm showing myself accountable to men. Yeah, yes. Apart from that, I'm accountable to Jesus Christ. Yes. And that carries far more weight Hallelujah. than any type of a, a hierarchy or, or a, a, any type of rulership or that right. the denomination might put into motion. Amen. amen. So we are accountable Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul, Paul yes. oh, Timothy, amen. Be sure that your ministry, amen, is it lines up with the word of God. That's amen. Right. Oh, it, absolutely. Hallelujah. So we see where these uh, uh, denominations and once again it can be uh, it can be not denominational groups. Amen. Right. They, they, they vote their pastors in and they make decisions and they, speak. And they pass it on down, yeah. amen, from the, the hierarchy in the church. But religious men desire that we ignore the word of God. Amen. Religious men, those that are, uh, you know, that are tempted to try to rule over others and establish their own way of things, they desire that we uh, ignore the word of God. That's one of the things that bothers me so much in the cross preaching group or our community when they say, well, you know, our faith is in the cross and it's not in the word of God. That is 100% true. That is correct. It couldn't be said any better. Faith in the word is not going to save us or mature us. Amen. But however, it, 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 Satan will take something like that, and, and he's he can he's he's very subtle, and he'll cause the people to begin begin to believe, Amen. That the studying and understanding the Word of God is no longer important. That's right. That now we are saying cross cross, which could be uh, very dangerous and deadly, Amen. If we are living by faith in the cross now we should have a hunger to know and understand the word of God amen. more than we have ever amen because that comes amen. with that that hunger and thirsting after righteousness amen it comes uh, with this with the cross I want to know more about the benefits of the cross. I want to know more about God's will and intent as it pertains to how that the church should function in this final hour. And the church should function exactly in the same way that the apostle Paul instructed the church to, to, to function in the early church. Amen. He was the master church builder, amen. If you want to know how uh, the church should operate and function, get in the word of God, read the, the Apostle Paul's epistles because they were all written to churches in that day and time, instructing them uh, in righteousness, in bringing forth uh, correction, bringing forth re reproof, bringing forth even encouragement. Right. Amen. But instructing the church how to function and operate in that day and time. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're thinking that because your faith is in the cross that it's no longer important to study the, the, the word of God, you're, you're treading on very dangerous ground because within, I said it Sunday, within the realm of the cross preaching community, Satan is going to work mightily to try to convince others, amen, to depart from that faith alone and embrace other things. You amen. need to understand what the word of God says, amen. Yes. Don't depend upon your husband. Amen. Don't depend upon your mother. Don't depend upon your wife. You need to know for Amen. yourself Praise as an individual what Praise the Word God. of God is saying to us. 
in this final hour because religious men desire that we ignore the word of God and follow them. Amen. Amen. Right. Now right. that word, I've already <clears throat> covered this, but that word number there in verse 12 speaks of those false apostles, that number, amen, and those referred to in verse 2 as some, some, these, this number, this, these, uh, this song, which are these false apostles, these were saying that Paul was walking according to the flesh when it was actually these false self-appointed apostles Amen. who were walking in the flesh. These were Paul's accusers. Yes. That's the way it is today. Can, see do, do, can you see, see that? Amen. 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 Uh, so men today uh, should hear the message that is being preached by those who are being accused of being troublemakers before they agree with the accusers. Come are you hearing me? Amen. 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 Men today, whoever, men, women, whoever today, are. whoever you are, you should hear, listen to the message that's being preached by those who are being accused Amen. Of being troublemakers before they agree with the accuser. Remember right. what when I was? On, uh, who was it? Elijah showed up, and who was it? Ahab said, uh, when Elijah showed up, Ahab met him, said, You're the one that's troubling uh, Israel. And then Elijah said, It's not, it's not me. I'm not troubling uh, Israel. Amen. It's you and, 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 your, and your fathers. Amen. The devil. Amen. There you go. So right. uh, the man of God. The true God raised, God appointed, God equipped, God anointed, man of God that's preaching the message across. He's not a man of God otherwise. That's right. Amen. Is always going to be accused of being the troublemaker. Amen. That's always been the case. That's Paul right. was. He always was. They told Paul, said it, you know, he's um uh, you know, oh, what was it they, they said? He he was a troublemaker or something else. Uh Oh, why, why is it I can't think? I said it's Sunday. Uh, well, we just have to move along. Get it come to me in just a moment. I'm trying to think. <laughs> they, they, they call Paul. I ain't really like that. They call him a lot of things. Right. Praise the Lord. But so there you have, as it pertains to what he's saying with that word number, and he said, or compared. Amen. That that means to join together or compare. Joins together. It means quite different uh, than uh uh, what we would think in our mind that it means, it means to join together. We're not to join together with, these, with this number of, of these that are false apostles. We are to separate ourselves from these. Nice. There it is again. God, the Holy Spirit, is always imploring to us through the Word of God to separate ourselves from these false apostles, false teachers, false brethren. Amen. Amen. We're not to stand with those. We're not to be a part of what they're doing. We're not to uh, to endorse them. We're not to even invite them into our house, That's the right. Bible says. Amen. So uh, we're not to join together. It says, or compare ourselves, join together ourselves with these some that commend that are self-appointed. They have self-appointed themselves to the to apostleship, which is being a false apostle. The word command here means that there were letters I've already said sent out. You can look at the uh, uh, scripture reference, Second Corinthians three and one. Just write that down. Check it out for yourself later. Uh, there were letters that were sent out that were uh, that were letters of recommendation. You know, we, we we use that terminology today. You know, for employment, you know, need a letter of recommendation, and and so, so here these letters are coming out of Jerusalem, but they're falsely written. Right. Amen. About false apostles, but the church is buying off on it. And, and the thing of it is, if it would happen then in oh. that day and time. In churches that were uh, founded by the Apostle Paul, how much more uh, and, and just as easily can it happen today? Amen. Amen. Well, oh, so and so, big name, Reverend, Doctor, you know, uh, Apostle, Prophet, Bishop, Bishop uh, you know, Doctor, and all yeah, of that, yeah. you know, 
with wreck it with the doctrines all over his wall right. uh, told us to come over here and you let us preach. I had some come into the church once before it was three of them. They come and presented themselves as apostles and prophets. They did. They shook my hand. I'm apostle so and so. Three of them. It was interesting. It was almost comical. Amen. There was a tall one. There was one middle height and there was a little short guy. And there was three apostles. That's how they have presented themselves. Amen. I'm, I'm the big apostle. And this is the the medium apostle, <laughs> and that's the little apostle. They were all apostles, and they. this is what they told me now, and I'm not making this up. He said, the last time we was here, and that was before I showed up, last time we was here, the pastor said, we was in a hurry that time, said the last time, that, the next time that we are in town, we can stop by and preach. And I said, well, that pastor is not here anymore. I'm the pastor, and I'm preaching tonight. You're welcome to stay, apostle sir, whoever you are, and hear the message that the Lord has given me on, tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. But they wouldn't do that. They turned around and, and, and I mean, I mean, just immediately upon me saying that, they just turned around and left because they didn't want to hear, you know, what the established pastor had to say. They wanted to try to influence the people right. with what he had to say, you're not a pastor if you allow somebody to get on a platform. You don't care about the people. Come on. Hey Amen. You're just a weak leg nobody. That's if right. if you just allow somebody to get on the on the platform because of their uh so-called self-given appointment and self-given credentials. I mean, Amen. The, the responsibility of the local pastor is to protect the body of Christ, yes. that local body, the sheep and the, and the lambs. Amen. Hallelujah. So take that at heart tonight and understand the responsibility the Lord's given to us in this last day. You know, we're going to have to turn away and turn down people. I get people self-inviting their, themselves to come over to preach here all the time. And I'll just say, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, my pulpit is not open to anyone except those that I know who are preaching Come the on. message Amen. of the cross. Right and right I up. don't know you as one of them. Come on. And I just present that to them, not in a hateful way, just politely. Amen. But I've had to do that as a number of times. People want to come and sing. I said, we have singers. I don't, Amen. we don't do gospel singing. Amen. We preach the gospel and then we worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. And that's what we do here. We don't go to gospel concerts. We don't do gospel concerts. We worship the Lord. Amen. And we preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. Those, that are, those that are out here doing gospel concerts, they are actually operating apart from the body of Christ. Now they're having to promote themselves to do that sort of thing. Amen. Instead of gathering in the local body and being a part of worshiping the Lord, now they are uh, they have it to promote themselves. Come listen to us. We're having this concert. And they have a following. It's no different than a rock concert that has groupies that follows them everywhere they go. Amen. Amen. We worship the Lord. We don't put on uh, gospel singers. Boy, I can really ruffle some feathers with that. Amen. So now they have positioned themselves. They're, they're singing about Jesus, but they're promoting themselves the whole time that they're doing it. Amen. 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 So it says here, amen, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, praise the Lord. And so they send out these letters recommending these false apostles coming from Jerusalem, amen, and, 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 and such had been written to the Corinthians to, to impress them to receive these false apostles. So we understand how easy that was in that day and time and how easy it can be today as well, amen. Amen. Rather, uh, it being from uh, individuals or, or Jerusalem, it is not known for sure. However, if the letter of commendation came from Jerusalem, it would surely carry some weight, and, and easily it's and easily it would impress the Corinthians. Such, however, has has. Uh, has uh, strayed them down a road in the wrong direction. And if they continue in that wrong direction, uh, it will result in the loss of their soul. Amen. Or at least weaken them seriously in a spiritual sense. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Such is where most of the church is today. Amen. The
and uh, highly promoted instead of accepting what God is sending in those that God is speaking oh, amen. through. Amen. amen. And, and God, once again, is not speaking through anyone who's not speaking the message of the cross. He's not sending anyone to hear anything other than the message of the cross. Amen. amen. So all of that is doing is just weakening the church spiritually. Now, they, they might, you know, they might have relationships uh, we identify with uh, some big name preacher, some big platform, some big church. We're identified with them. I hear it all the time. You know, well, we support thus and so. We follow so and so. Amen. And, and there's a when there's a sort of there's a there's a uh, certain amount of boasting in all of that. It's in other words, you know, look at who we are. You know, you're not identifying with anyone over there. Yes, we are. We're identifying with the King of Kings Hallelujah. and the Lord of Lords. We're identifying with Jesus Christ and Hallelujah. what he did at Calvary. We're glory in the cross. Yes, we are identifying with someone. Amen. But they, 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 it puffs them up. You know, the church <laughs> likes to snuggle up. With, with, they like to identify with something like that. Denominations, we would, they like, people like to snuggle up to those big name tags. We're Baptists, we're Methodists, we're Episcopalian, we're, we're thus and such, amen. They like to snuggle up with those name tags. If you go up, those name tags are going to fall off. If you go up, you go down, they're going to melt off, amen. The name tag that I'm going to be wearing, amen, is redeemed Come on. by the blood of the Lamb. That's what we're going to be identified in, in, in glory and in heaven, amen. We're going to be identified as being redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's going to be our identity, amen. Hallelujah. Because of the blood of the Lamb, amen. The question was asked, amen, of those that was in, in, in heaven. Well, how did you get here? Well, we got <laughs> we got here because, amen, because of the Lamb, amen, amen, because of the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. That means that our testimony My never Lord strayed Lord. from the Lamb, amen. My we Lord. came in by the Lamb, and the Lamb kept us, and here we are, still praising the Lamb, glory to God. Amen. Lamb. That's that's our identity. That's it. Amen. amen. Today. Just as it should, was in that day and time, as the Apostle Paul was trying to make the church to understand that. Turn away from these. That's what he's dealing with here. I hope we see that. He's dealing with those Amen. that are presenting themselves to be somewhat. Yes. False apostles who, you know, are puffed up about themselves. They, you know, they buddy up and they recommend each other. Amen. Well, right. you need to have a old but he's so and so yeah. apostle over here yeah. come and preach, amen. So yeah. they, they they recommended one another. Right. And all they did was pulling the church down, 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 further and further away from the very gospel that the apostle Paul had founded them, them, founded them on. Amen. Amen. Uh, such is where most of the church is present. And most people most preachers put the approval of men first with little thought. Given to the will of God. Amen. Amen. It's Second Timothy four five. Second Timothy chapter four and verse five, where Paul told Timothy to make full proof Amen. of your ministry. How do you make full proof of your ministry? Not that we're endorsed by those out of Baton Rouge. Not that we're endorsed by those out of Springfield. Springfield's over there. Not that we're endorsed by those over in Cleveland. Not that we've been endorsed by any man. Amen. But we are endorsed by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Make full proof of your ministry. How do we make full proof of our ministry? What makes our ministry legitimate? Amen. Number one, yes, we're called of God, but we've been called of God to line this ministry up according to the written word of God, not what men think. Amen. It's, there's a huge segment of the, the church that we, that we know that they're, they're not really preachers, they're promoters. Amen. Amen. They don't have anything to do or say unless they're promoting that big ministry. Amen. They're just promoting the big ministry. Amen. Preachers, two pre true preachers of the gospel, they preach Christ and Him crucified. 
That's what a true preacher is going to do. He's not going to be promoting uh, another ministry or big ministries, amen. They're going to be promoting uh, the, the Lamb of God, That's the right. gospel, amen. Who are you beholding? Come on. This is the question. Who are you beholding? Are you beholding, are you beholding the Lamb? Are you beholding uh, men? Are you riding on the coattail oh, uh, of some personality? Now, I've got to stay with this for a few minutes, gentlemen, amen. Oh. But that's where most of the church is presently, amen. And then and, and, and Paul said also in First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 22, he told, he's instructing this pastor Timothy to be a pastor, amen. And he said, lay hands suddenly on no man, amen. Like that means not to give approval to any man too soon. Amen. Lay hands, you know, the, the, the custom was to lay hands upon those uh, individuals that's being approved for ministry. Yes. Amen. And Paul said, lay hands on no man suddenly, too soon. Amen. Be sure that person's ready for that responsibility and also be sure that they're going to follow after the gospel that I have presented. That's so it. Remember we taught it yeah. after my way. That they're going to follow after my ways. They're going to preach my ways. In my ways, the Apostle Paul is the cross. We preach Christ crucified. So he said, lay hands suddenly on no man. And then he followed that up and said, be, neither be partakers of other men's sins. Sins. Amen. In other words, keep yourself pure. If you lay your hands suddenly on someone, you, amen, and, and he brings havoc into the body and leads people astray and deceives people, you, by endorsing that person, right. has become just as guilty as the one pulling the trigger. Amen. amen. You just, <laughs> it's just like that guy driving the getaway car. He's just as guilty as the one that went in there and held a gun, robbed the bank. That's amen. It. He's just as guilty. Amen. So you you become guilty by association. Amen. Amen. It's important that we know who we stand with Come and we partner with. God. Amen. Yes. It's important that we know and understand that we're not trying to eliminate anyone. No. Amen. We have been given a, a, a ministry of reconciliation. We have been reconciled by the blood, been given a ministry of reconciliation. But in that place, amen, we're calling people to come over to where we're standing, where we stand. We're standing at the cross. We're standing where God is standing. Amen. Is that boasting? We're, we're boasting in the cross. We're glorying in the cross. Amen. We, we are thankful for what the Lord has done. Amen. And because of the great pride, that Jesus paid on Calvary's cross for our reconciliation. Yes. I cannot stand apart from that yes. and embrace and identify with those that I know are presenting another gospel. Amen. All I'm doing is bringing confusion and a double standard into the body of Christ yes. by yes. doing that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we, we see this being done in denominations, even independent groups are very uh, they have become very powerful uh, in these last days. Men uh, running uh, the church and uh, attempting to run other churches. And, and if, if one is not sanctioned by them, uh, oftentimes if, if one is not endorsed or sanctioned by them, whoever that is, Paul would say that number, they, they, those people that he spoke about knew who he was referring to. And they do too. He didn't, he didn't have to give a list of names. That's people right. People today, they, they, you know who, who we're referring to when we use these type of names. Same thing. We're, we're, we're trying to line our language and our use of words to uh, exactly as the Apostle Paul would. Amen. That's what we're striving for. Yes. Amen. 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 Paul said, follow me, imitate Amen. me. Preach what I preach, say what I say, amen, as I follow Christ. He's our example, once again, how to function and operate in the body of Christ, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, if you don't adhere or follow or come into agreement with these, amen, if, if, and, and consider yourself to be sanctioned 
by them uh, that you're you're put on a blacklist. You're blacklisted and considered to be a wrong preacher, unwilling to submit to their authority. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. And then from that point, every effort is made to destroy that individual who stands for the truth. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to tell you uh, a little uh, event that took place. Uh, I guess it would be. Uh, We've been here for about 20 years, thereabout. I guess it would be roughly now, at this point, about 18 or 19 years ago, when we came to Greenwood, pastor in the synagogue church on down the road in 82. Amen. And then we began to come into the understanding of the message of the cross. And the, the more we grew in that understanding, the more I realized that we could not stay in that denomination. Everything was tugging against me to stay there. The people were rejecting the message of the cross, except for a few that are here tonight that came out with us. Brother Jonathan was one of those. Brother Denny, Sister Wendy, amen. Sister Laquita, maybe and some others I can't recall. But nonetheless, amen, everything was tugging at me, amen. The Lord was to come out of that denomination. They were introducing, at that particular time, they were introducing the, uh, the Rick Warren uh, purpose-driven lie. Uh, you know, they were introducing what they were referring to as their vision for transformation. That's how they titled it. It was their, the, the Assemblies of God, vision for transformation. That's a really With the, the, Absolutely. So I was learning that the true vision for transformation Come was on. to have my eyes on the oh, Hallelujah. See, Praise that's where we were. The we was making a transition hallelujah. from being influenced by false apostles and yes. false leaders. And now there was a true vision that was coming into Lord view. God. And that vision was the cross, you Lord see. Jesus. Amen. The, in, the, in the Old Testament where the prophets were preaching. Or, or teach about, you know, people would perish because they lack a vision. Well, that's the vision that we're talking about, amen, the vision of Calvary, the vision of redemption through the blood of the Lamb. Without that vision, amen, the people perish. Without our eyes focused upon the cross, without looking to the cross, the people perish, amen. Perish, yeah. So, Anyhow, the, we finally realized after, I think it was a year, maybe two, you know, that was a while back, can't hold me directly to these timelines. I'm just kind of shooting from the hill, amen, on this. But uh, after a couple of years, you know, I mean, we bought every red uh, uh, study guide that there was, handed it to the people. We were buying out of our pockets. I was, uh, you know, I wasn't making much money at all. Amen. Sister Debbie, I don't think was working at the time. I don't know if she may have been, but nonetheless, amen, we were buying expository study Bibles. The only thing that was available at the time was the New Testament. We was buying them, giving them to the paper, doing everything we possibly can. Mm -hmm. I was preaching it on Sunday morning, every opportunity that I could. We was preaching the cross. I told the Lord, I said, amen. Lord, you know, uh, I repented of the direction it was going. I said, Lord, uh, you know, if you'll forgive me from this day forward, I made him a promise. Lord, if you'll forgive me, amen. We've all done that, I think. Kind of bargained with the Lord a little bit. Lord, if you'll forgive me. Because I felt like I had, I had, you know, I had, you know, I felt like I had done so much damage and had hurt the Lord so bad by the things that I had been preaching. I told the Lord, if you can find a way to forgive me, Amen. From this day forward, I will preach the message of the cross. And by the grace of God, amen, we've held true to that. By his help, I amen. amen. We've held true to that. Amen. But nonetheless, we finally come to the place after a couple of years, we realize we cannot stay here, amen, and carry out in, in the will of God. And so uh, these people are rejecting and they're actually just pushing us out the door. Uh, basically, so anyhow, Debbie and I made the decision to resign. We resigned the, uh, the, the as pastors of the church, and I resigned my credentials with the Assemblies of God. Amen. And uh, I remember writing a, a just it was a nice letter, typing it out, putting it in an envelope, mailing it to the headquarters, and, and I just told them I said I can no longer partner with you and your vision for transformation and they were using that terminology of paradigm shift yeah, and that word paradigm means a focus 
purpose, amen. So there, they was actually advertising all of this. We we have a shift of focus. We're introducing a paradigm shift. We have a new vision for transformation. They were on board strongly with the, the Rick Warren and, and his teachings, which was nothing more than the law and humanistic psychology. The Lord opened my eyes to all of that. So anyhow, I sent a nice little letter, amen, to the, uh, not hateful, amen, but just flat told them, you know, I can right. no longer partner with you in the things, direction that you're handed, headed. And uh, I've just sent my little card back to him, my little credential mm -hmm. card. Just, you know, you carry it around in the billfold and stuck it. Says, hey, bye, I'm done. I'm done with you. This, this we're, we're moving on. Didn't know what we were. had no idea what we was going to do cut at rope. that time. Hallelujah. I just knew we had to cut rope with him at Hallelujah. that time, young man. And uh, this is me. I mean, a lot of people out there are not going to agree with me. I, I can't help that either. This is me. This is this is what the Lord, how the Lord dealt with me. I can no longer uh, represent the exclusive message of the cross and then uh, identify with what the Assemblies of God was promoting. Amen. So we had no idea what we was going to do at that particular time. I really didn't want to start another church because right. I felt like I had failed at there. But nonetheless, uh, I sent that letter to him and I didn't hear anything back. In, in my mind and in my heart, it was settled. I have Amen. resigned, you know. Amen. I've left y'all. We, 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 we just walking away, amen, amen. and uh, I resigned. So I didn't hear anything out of them, but several months later, it was that long, it was a long time, they, the Assemblies of God out of the office in Springfield, the, the national office, they sent me a letter and said, we have decided not to accept your resignation. <laughs> so, they, but we have decided to uh, to uh, terminate you as pastor. So what that did, you know, inst instead of accepting my resignation and saying we're not going to accept the resignation, we're going to, I don't think it was the word terminate, help me think of discharge or something, a, a, a word something similar to that, terminate, discharge, something of that nature, that word, something, but it meant that what I'm just saying. So we 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 have decided to uh, discharge you, uh, and and what that did is put them in the controlling position. You see, right? Instead of them accepting my leaving and resignation, that put them in charge. We decided we're just right. going to terminate you. You're not a pastor. Right. That's, That's right. right. Amen. And so right. that put them in the controlling seat. You see that. Right. So that, that's how they think, amen. They they always attempt to position themselves yeah. to be in the controlling position, you right. see. Now, what that done, uh, we think, well, that's just a light thing. Just throw that paper in, in an envelope in the trash. And I, that's what I did. I, I think I kind of kept that around for a few days and just kind of looked at it. And I think I finally threw that away. But what that does now, if you understand the structure of the denominations, they they send out a, a quarterly letter, uh, a report to all of the assemblies of God in the United States. And on that, they, within that report, they have a, a piece of paper that identifies the names of new ministers and then the names the word is dismissed. Yes, there you go. Dismissed. dismissed. And the names of those that are newly credentialed, and then the names of those that have resigned, and then the names of those that have been dismissed. Well, they put my name in the bracket of being dismissed instead of resigned, as I've already explained. But what that does, see, that leaves within the community of all the AG churches, that leaves them speculating as to what was he dismissed for? See, that's not explained, you see, by them 
taking control of that situation. So it, 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 it's really uh, evil if, when you right. think about it because it leaves the people to speculate, well, what did he do? What did, what did he do? What did he do? Was he, uh, did he misbehave in some way? Was he, you know, a child molester? He just left it wide open for the church to speculate and right. make up their own decision, you see. But that is what happens, amen, when men rule the church, yes, amen. They yes. have to present themselves in, in control. And all of that was was presented in that way to protect that denomination, amen, from me and the things that I might attempt to try to influence others within the ranks, yep. you see. They, they, they present me as being the bad guy, you see, instead of having an opportunity to say, well, I left them because, amen, they show that I have been dismissed. And that's the type right. of, uh, that's the type of spirit that you're seeing uh, being carried out right. in the body of Christ today. They make that man or that woman that's been called and, and equipped with this message and anointed of the Lord and preaching the message of the truth. They're always doing everything, and it's really the, it's the strategy of the enemy, That's right. doing everything to try to undermine that person or that ministry that's determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified to try to, to, try to present him to be a hindrance and to be an evil Doer. That's what Paul said. He, yeah. they, he said, they, you know, I've been made to look at like an evil doer. Right. They make right. you look like you are an evil doer when they are the ones that are operate, on. operating right. by the That's flesh. Right. They are the ones that are doing the evil by holding back the, and suppressing the truth. Amen. And holding back. Uh, you know, uh, the, the message of righteousness and suppressing all of that in unrighteousness. So that's where we are today. Thank y'all. And that's, uh, that's, that's the reason I can relate so well yes. to what's being said here. And Paul said all of that is not wise, amen. Right. He said, they, Paul said, such is not wise. Such is, is, is self-righteousness. Righteousness where they made themselves, they made Listen to this. They made themselves the standard of excellence. Amen. That's right. You see, you have to live up to our standard. You see, they remove uh, the word of God as our standard. Amen. They remove that as our standard and, and say we have to live up to their standard right. of excellence rather than Christ. Amen. Second Corinthians. So here we go. Second Corinthians 4. In 11, the Holy Spirit is always not handing us over to man, not handing Amen. us over to the hierarchy of the body of, of church or to religion. The Holy Spirit is always handing us over to the cross. The Holy Spirit is always handing us over to death. Amen. Amen. So that the life of Christ Amen. might be made manifest in our life. This is a graphic picture of pride and mm -hmm. self-complacency and they're not wise paul said which actually means they're stupid and foolish i think paul is, is the holy spirit is quite with with the apostle paul sometimes is quite more polite in the translation than the word itself actually means when right. the, the, when paul said they're not wise it actually means they're stupid and foolish amen right. these type are opposed to the righteousness of Christ, i.e., they're saying right. as the cross. Such is the is a sign of acute pride, making themselves the standard of excellency. Amen. Amen. Colossians three and three says, "We are dead. Come on, in our life is he." he in Christ. Christ. Amen. Go like ahead, Brother Jonathan. I'll save you a few God. minutes. Amen. I'm Praise sorry. God. I took up all the time. No, he, that was an evil pastor for sharing that. I thank you for sharing that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, we need not look further than the Word of God. The Word of God, you know, it, it speaks for itself. And the bottom line is people do not, they do not want to go by God's standard of righteousness. That's right. They want to establish their own righteousness. 
you know, as the Bible says in Romans 10, you know, you know, he, he said that about the Jews. Paul wrote about Israel. It is my desire and prayer for Israel that they might be saved. That's right. But they went about to establish their own righteousness and have not, and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God, which is Christ Amen. and him crucified. Um, let me look at verse 13 for, uh, for a second. I want to explain something about it. Yeah. Like but we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. The word measure uh, right there in rule has to do with, you know, God has, has set, he's, he's measured out um, our, our ministry and a ministry that for each one of us, he's measured out our own, our ministry that every one of us has. And and the rule is a, like a boundary, the measure and the rule is the you know God is measured out for each one of us. Just even though we know God's will for every one of us is to be saved and sanctified, that's the, that is God's will for everybody. But but we all also the measure and the rule is what God has given. And see, and what I see here, and and am I studying on, on twelve through eighteen? I just want to summarize it by saying this: that either. Men are we will measure out our own ministry in a you know proudly self righteously comparing you know with that number they talked about you know trying to join with them and what they're doing or we're over and we're measuring out our own path to go here and to go there you know all the while we're calling it God you know we'll be calling it God look what God is doing that's what they're doing the false apostles. Everybody's going to say they're God of God. Or we will allow God to measure out what ministry he wants us to do. Only, and that's only limited by glory in the cross. You know, I, I'm thinking of the rule also. Can, I don't think I'll do no harm to the word of God by saying that that rule, because I looked up the word rule in the original Greek, it means the, it means the same thing in this passage and it also means the same thing in Philippians 3, um, 15 through 18. He talks about, you know, let us all mind the same thing walk and, and walk according to this rule. Yes. And then in Galatians uh, 6, 14 through 16, he talks about uh, those that glory in, you know, in, in your flesh. They glory those you know, men. Let me go there if you don't mind. Let me read that real quick. Why? Praise God. Um, and before I go there, I want to say this. I stopped by Galatians 1 because I was thinking about that. Um, you know, how Paul, when he received the message of the cross, you know, he, he didn't consent with Jerusalem. He didn't go, you know, ask them what they thought about it. He didn't go to Jerusalem. He, he received the message of the cross from directly from Jesus Christ, the, the meaning of the new covenant. You know, he didn't go down to Jerusalem. He didn't, you know, ask them what their permission to preach it or, or what they thought about it. He knew what God had given. He knew that he heard from the Lord. And um, so he received the message of the cross. So the standard and the rule is, is if we don't have proper faith anchored in Christ and crucified, we will be deceived. I was looking at, um, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He said, you know, I have laid the foundation and let everyone take heed how he builds upon this foundation. Then he goes on to say in verse 18, if he says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man think if any man thinks himself to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. You know, that's something to take note of. If any man thinks himself to be something, you know, to be wise, let him become a fool that he may be wise. And what that means is we're going to be counted as a fool for Christ. When you know when you're following Christ and the cross, you're going to be looked at as a fool. But you see, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take, you gotta take up the cross. And it doesn't matter what people think about you or say about you. You gotta, you gotta be willing to become a fool for Christ's sake. You know, if not, you're going to be, you'll deceive yourself because you'll be, you know, among those that we talked about already. You know, which is contrary to the Word of God. So everything we need is in the Word of God. If, if people would just see it, you know, if they would just, you know, seek after truth. But uh, Galatians six, 
starting in verse 12, it says, and as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For, they, for neither did they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Everything Pastor Paul has been saying, you know, about the denominational world and, and what Paul said there in 2 Corinthians 10, you know, it's all flesh and it's all because people don't, they're not, it's really it boils down to willful ignorance. People are not, they don't want to believe in the message of the cross. You know, they don't want to embrace the cross. They want glory. They want self-glory. You know, but God, but Paul said, but God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, Peace be on them and mercy upon and upon the Israel of God. Praise, Amen. praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, in addition to that, though, and all of that's right, but in addition to all of that, and I believe what Paul is also dealing with here in our text, amen, is yes, we've been called to the rule or to the message of the Holy Spirit. We're not to operate outside of the, the, the parameters of the finished work of Christ mm -hmm. on the cross. We are to adhere to that. That's our message, amen. amen. But also within that, amen, see the uh, the idea stems from the, from the thought that these false apostles were claiming that Paul had no right to minister in Corinth uh, or any other <coughs> place as far as that is concerned. And they thought they, remember, they were trying to establish their hierarchy. Uh, and so they uh, were trying to say that the Apostle Paul had no right preaching there in Corinth. And that it was their right to delegate who could preach uh, there and, and who could preach anywhere. So you see that hierarchy that's being established there. Right. So, uh, so Paul is dealing with that. But within all of these other things that you're dealing with. So yes, amen. The, 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 the gospel is the message of the cross. But once again, the apostles there were trying to find everything that they could to present, uh, to, to prevent Paul from coming back into the church and correcting the message that they had preached so now he's saying that, uh, now they're saying that Paul did not have the authority to come in and preach because they are the ones, don't forget now, these are the ones that received this uh, letter of accommodation, a recommendation from, from Jerusalem, we believe, amen, endorsing them. So now they're trying to just move the apostle out, That's right. you see, so that, I believe is, is what is exactly what is trying to be presented here. Amen. In the midst of all this, Paul is trying to overcome that. Yes. Now, yes. in the midst of all of that, I hope we, I hope we can see that, amen. amen. Uh, and, and all of this, it just kind of bleeds together. These that don't want us here now because we have severed relationships from that hierarchy, uh, will we'll say well, we don't have, you know, we haven't authorized you to be here. Amen. You're not operating under our leadership anymore. We're up, but the leadership that we're functioning, operating so under God. now is yeah. way above yeah. man. Yeah. He's Praise way God. above anyone. Right. See, men, you know, it, it, you know, even, even people we're talking to tonight, Flesh wants us to be accountable to flesh. Yes, it There's something within us. Amen. It's something that, well, it's flesh, but it wants us to be accountable. They want to see us visually bow down to men. That's right. the reason That's right. bow down and kissing the Pope's toe is so popular to right. a huge population of people. Amen. Right. They see that person bowing down to man. We bow down to no man. We call no man father. Hallelujah. Amen. 
we bow down to the Lord, yes. Amen. He, 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 <laughs> he's the one for, He's the one calling the shots he's according to His Word, word amen. amen. But in verse fifteen, let's shift gears for just a moment, Amen. In verse fifteen, Paul says, "Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having having hope." When your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our room abundantly. Amen. Abundantly. Hallelujah. So this verse proclaims to us that God has literally measured off the field of ministry for every person he has called. Hallelujah. I want us to be able to see that yes, tonight. Right. Amen. Right. It's important. He has called. Amen. Uh, you know, Corinth was not, uh, and, and Paul is saying that that Corinth was not out of bounds as it pertains to his calling that God had placed upon him. Amen. Yes. So Corinth was not out of his bounds. He's been called, amen, and given a measure to minister also in Corinth as well. And, and, but when God calls a person to the ministry, their field of ministry is not of their own choice. No, it's okay? We have to understand that. Yes. Amen. When God calls a person, he has a specific field of ministry already designated or desirous of that person to operate in. Amen. Amen. When God calls a person to the ministry, their field of ministry is not of their own choice, but it must be of God's choosing Amen. as well. Amen. Amen. Yes. Do you see that? The yes. call to minister the gospel involve, involves the initial summons that, you know, we've been arrested, we've been summoned right. by the Lord, yeah. that initial call, uh, that, that initial calling, amen, from God, but it also includes constant direction as to where he desires us to minister. Come on. Understand yeah. that. Yes. It involves a constant instruction as to where he desires for us to minister. He doesn't merely call someone and then allow them to select their own region of ministry. Mm -hmm. Think about that. He, he doesn't call us to ministry and then just allow us to right. wander around right. uh, seeking to select where he wants us to ministry. He calls us to the ministry, then he calls us where he wants us planted to minister. Amen. 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 Are you seeing Amen. that? He doesn't call us to ministry, arrest us to that ministry, that calling, and then just turn us loose. Uh, no, man. I just keep repeating myself no, to, to just go out here and just hunt down a place of our own choosing. Right. That calling includes that place Amen. or region yes. of ministry. You know, Amen. oftentimes the field, though, however, is no further than wherever we are. Right. Than the place of their calling Hallelujah. or divine summons. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Most of those pastors who ministered in the churches of Paul's day never moved beyond the region that church was planted in. They stayed right there. Now, let me move. I'm sorry, Brother James. Let me move into verse 16. It says to Paul says to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hands. So now Paul is short of, sort of shifting gears here, to so to speak. He's, he's somewhat leaving, uh, talking about these false apostles that were saying that he wasn't qualified to minister in, in, in Corinth and elsewhere because they were the apostles. We have these credentials out of Jerusalem verifying as such, but they're false letters, they're false apostles. Paul said, no, I'm qualified by Almighty God to minister here go. in, in Corinth and wherever I go. Yes. But now in the midst of all of that, Paul is giving some instruction here to uh, ministers such as ourselves and other ministers that, that are with him. He says in verse 16, to preach the gospel in regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. The note says, 
Listen to what it says. Paul would preach the gospel where others had not ventured and in their built churches. The truth uh, is false apostles with false doctrines cannot get uh, people saved so these distractors would have to that the word says parasite I don't know if that's a misprint or if it says parasite Paul's converts that means to infect them yeah. or if it, if it actually sh means to proselytize which means to move away mm -hmm. disciples after themselves right. but nonetheless I want to deal with the first part of that comment and that statement that uh, that that Paul made there, Amen. What Paul is saying is that he would not venture into a territory that was already being ministered to that region. He wouldn't venture into that region that's already being ministered to by a by a preacher who is preaching the message of the cross. Amen. Right. That's what ministry was all about then. That's what ministry is all about today. Or it's not true ministry. Right. Amen. So Paul is saying, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't invade another man's territory just because I'm the apostle Paul. Amen. That man is laboring in the field and the the rule, the the parameter, the measure that God has given him to minister in. Amen. You see, that is your broad picture of what's being say, said there. Amen. So that man is is uh, is is instructing that region in righteousness he's preaching the message of the cross so why would I think that I should invade that territory and begin to establish churches there when there's a whole uh, Roman Empire out here for me to, mm -hmm. to move into but understand it wasn't by choice that he did those things he did what he did went to where he went because of the leading of the Holy Spirit in his life he was ever seeking the leading of the holy spirit amen. amen so he would go into a region and a place that had not yet been impacted by a preacher of the cross amen, amen. and he would go there and he would endeavor to establish churches now let's bring that to where we are today this bears bears uh credence to the idea that it would not be of God. It's not really an idea. This is a standard that we gauge it on. How do you how do you come up with that conclusion? Well we we have the uh, instruction and the teachings of the Apostle Paul right here. Yeah. That's how I come up with what I'm about to say. What is it would not be God's will to go five down, five miles down the road from Crossway Ministries and start another cross preaching church there. Amen. That that would be a scheme. And is anybody listening to me? That would be a scheme and a strategy of the enemy yes. to weaken the body of Christ that God is originally planted. Amen. Amen. Because what that's going to do, that's going to present, you know, to the people. Now we have to make a decision that we support this new church that. These, uh, this, uh, this man is saying we're of God we're preaching the message of the cross to amen or do we continue to support the place where we have originally been planted amen, amen. now it is God's will that cross preaching churches be raised up in other towns right. amen. amen God's not going to plant one five miles down the road or five minutes down the road that is not of God. Here is your example. Paul says, I wouldn't do that. Right. Amen. That man that God has already planted there, amen, is to evangelize that region and equip the people and establish them in the truth. Amen. amen. If, if I was to do that, I would hinder that work. Right. Amen. Just think what that would do if Paul went into a particular region where everybody would go to Paul's church, amen. So that's going to lead, that's going to weaken the church that God has originally right. established amen. in that area. Now, yes. okay, so oh, how am I going to say this? Help me, Lord. So, uh, you know, let's just say, well, let's just stay with Greenwood. I can think of other places. So you have, uh, you have a man, uh, whoever that man is, that comes to town 
and he's come from Jerusalem, amen, and he's preaching in a church down the road, but but he knows that I'm here preaching the message of the cross. So he comes now, not with the intent to strengthen the local body that God has established already. He comes with the intent, maybe not necessarily to do damage to that church, but his actions will. 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 Yes. Amen. He comes now not because he cares for the body and God's will and God's work for that region. Amen. Now he comes to line his pockets. Amen. He's now he he knows, well, I can preach down the road and get a good offer and all that. That's what it's all about in a lot of situations. It's all about an offering, a love offering. It's all it's all about it's all about money in a lot of situations, amen. Situations. Wherewith a true man of God, he's going to turn down and invite or, you know, most of these preachers, they invite them themselves to say, I think it'd be good if I come and preach for you. I've had to turn down a lot like that, amen. So, uh, you know, he's not working for God. He's not trying to help that local pastor build up that church. He's just in it for himself now. Yes. He's just doing a work for himself now. Amen. He's not really concerned with that local pastor. Not at He's all. not really concerned with God's church plan. He's not concerned about building up that body. Amen. He's just all, now he's the one that's operating from the flesh, amen. It's a lot that can be said about all this. I guess we cut Brother James off tonight. I'm so sorry, brother. We'll give you more space yeah. next time. Maybe, right. maybe I said too much. I said some things I felt like I really was hard pressed to say tonight. And, and I sure hope that the things that we have said has been beneficial to you, that you understood uh, the, the things that we presented tonight. These are things that very rarely anyone ever uh, deals with or talks about. When we teach a particular uh, uh, letter or epistle, verse by verse we run into situations like this where we if we have a choice we either just overlook it skip it or we deal with it my choice is to deal with it amen uh, amen so amen. we present this to the body of christ amen. tonight amen we we, we pray that uh, we we set it in a way that will be beneficial to you and the body as a whole and uh, we just pray that you'll meditate upon these things You'll think upon these things, and uh, uh, it will uh, just uh, it will just uh, unfold and manifest in your in your heart and your Our life. Lord, Amen. Lord. It's important in this final hour uh, how, what we do here on a local level. It's important how we uh, involve ourselves in the the strategy of God yes. in this final hour. Yes. Amen. Yes. To to raise up ministers and ministries across the country. It's important that we know who to support, and it's important that we know who to turn from. Amen. And we, we need the, the ability to discern That's right. in this final hour. And that discernment is only going to come as you grow in the understanding of the Word of God. God. Amen. Right. Amen. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that right division is making an application to the entirety of the word of God Amen. to the cross. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you. We're, we're delighted and thrilled again tonight Praise that God. you saw fit to join us. Be back with us Praise Sunday God. morning. Uh, as we worship our great God, preach the message of the cross, hope to see you then. God bless you. Amen. Love you, each and every one. Hallelujah.